Welcome to the Narrow Walk Podcast, episode three. And today we are going to finally suit up and talk about the armor of God. But before we start, I want to start off with a prayer, um, if you don't mind. And yeah, Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every single person that has clicked on this broadcast, this podcast, this episode, wherever they're clicking on it from, wherever they're watching it, listening to it from. I pray that you bless them abundantly, open up their eyes and their ears to hear and receive your word right now, Lord. I pray that your spirit of truth is with them, revealing them to the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom of God, to understanding and knowledge and the wisdom of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that every single person is touched and blessed by this prod- by this podcast, by this platform, by everything that you have done here, Lord. I pray that I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit, that you speak through me to the people of God so that they can receive your message clear as day. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's get into this, guys. Um, I had to, I, I always break the third, fourth, fifth, I don't know how many walls I, I break when I say I had to re-record this again. Um, it, it's almost like a tradition at this point, so it's like, okay. Um, but I, I did have to re-record this again. Not that far along, though. Thank God. I, I did it. I had to re-record it within, I didn't even get to the armor stuff. I, I did it, like, at some point along the lines of mid introduction because the introduction is kind of a little bit long but i'm gonna speed it up for you guys um so you don't have to get the back end of that um but before we start as always how are you and i'm doing great the lord has covered me take care of me bless me it's been faithful as always i can't complain um i have been in a I, I want to say weird, but I, I've been in a in an interesting place for the past week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, I just been in a place of transition, but God has blessed me through it. Um, it's working some things out of me, and just staying in His presence is just what's the most important part of it. Um, and then I've noticed a lot of things as well. I've just been very discerning and. Yeah, so <laughs> not going to get much into it because there's probably going to be later episodes where we're going to discuss stuff like this. Um, and like I said, it's not all going to be formally a study or like a Bible study per se, but it is going to still have the guidelines, the guardrails um, of the word of God. It's going to be talking about things in a biblical perspective and an understanding of the word of God, God's principles, his words, his laws, his rules, his commandments, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's all going to stem from that. So yeah, while this is going to be, while the first couple episodes, for those of you who've been watching along and tracking along, and thank you for everybody who's been supporting, watching along, tracking along. Numbers don't matter to me. It's the will of God being done and people just saying that they're blessed by or or watching or saying that they're you know engaging it in in it and you know while they're at work or whatever they're doing like this was my intention so i'm i'm so i'm blessed to know that people are including this in their daily lives and um just you know yeah that's the whole point of this so um thank you for that for letting me know and and if you are just let me know because it blesses me a lot um but I say all that to say the following episodes are already written out topic wise, but it's not constructed um, like format wise or layout or, you know, the topics are not fully um, whatever, you know, (laughs) I I don't have the have the right words, but the topics are not fully constructed, I guess. Um, And it they're not gonna all be like that now what i will say is i don't have anything against this or anybody who does do this but a lot of these topics and these ideas and stuff like that now i know a lot of podcasts tend to they they write up stuff and they put stuff you know um but a lot don't and i used to be one of them who did it i used to come out of fresh out of prayer time all up in tongues if those of you who know freedom wave i i used to you know be wilding like but it's it's it was all in you know 
having zeal for the Lord and loving God and just, you know, wanting to put something out there. Um, and, you know, I felt I was blessed during that time to to have that experience. Um, going forward, not everything is going to be so structural and like the, the we're going to I'm going to have like Bible verses. And we're going to go verse by verse. It's not going to all be like that. Just for those who are subscribed and watching and stuff like that, it's going to be a plethora of content, but it's all going to be led by the spirit of God. I, I, to be real with you, at first I didn't even have a mindset. Like I knew I wanted to come back to the podcasting thing, but I didn't know what I wanted it to be or what direction I wanted to go. So the name from everything, if you have watched or listened to previous episodes, if you haven't, please do so. I'm going to put it somewhere up on the screen. Um, the name and everything has, has been Holy Spirit led. Like I, I just, I'm grateful for this. I'm, I'm grateful for this, this platform and, and doing this and stuff like that. And it's, it's a big responsibility. That's why I take out my time and you might see, I say new episodes every other week, but it might be every other two weeks. I really got to change that because it has been every other two weeks. And that's mainly because I just want to spend time in God's word and spend time in his presence. And, and, and it's not, everything's about pushing out content. Um, so yeah. That's what I've learned. Now, let's talk about the climate because this might not be the same for everyone, but I do believe that God's word is true. And I, I, I do hear his voice. And I, when he does say things, I see them come to pass because he's God um, and I trust him. And I know that that his word does not return void. Um, he has spoken to me about the climate of spiritual warfare getting more intense. And I've seen it. I don't know if y'all have seen it. I don't know what y'all have seen but i've seen it and i've 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 prophesied about it and i've you know all this stuff and it's it's just getting more intense but it's also in a way of like god kind of like exposing the enemies the enemy's plans and exposing just like hidden lies that's just been happening just in the body in the world in culture like it's it's all over just god is just pulling back the veil and i see it um and he's made known to me um, and have told me to mention many times before in words that I might have released on my platforms. Um, if you haven't followed my TikTok, you can go ahead and do that. It's going to be below or wherever on the screen or wherever. Um, I've He has given me words to put out about climate, about spiritual climate, about directions that we're heading seasons and times and stuff like that. Um, and... I feel like the warfare is already here. This the intense spiritual warfare. It's like I, it's already here, um, and many of us in the body of Christ have been either receiving really intense or more than normal or casual attacks from the enemy from all sides, and this can come from manifesting through the people around you, the people around you manifesting, like, <laughs> or manifesting through, uh, work, school, uh, just. It, it attacks your prayer life. It attacks your time with God. Like, you know, those type of things. It can attack your sleep or dreams and visions, like all that type of stuff, right? Um, and it's good to discern that because sometimes God could be giving you warnings or God could be removing stuff out of your life. But as a whole climate-wise, God has mentioned to me that the enemy has been overplaying his hand a lot lately, and this is because of timing. We are in a, it's like he's in a strict time escape right now i guess um and he he revealed to me that this is guerrilla warfare what is guerrilla warfare guerrilla war warfare is the use of hit and run tactics by small mobile groups of irregular forces operating in territory uh controlled by a hostile or regular force so in one of the recordings <laughs> that i recently just did of this episode God has made mention to me of, of, of a revelation that when um, uh, the early colonies of Europe, colonizers, came over here to the native land, they were not aware of guerrilla warfare until it happened. So until they were in the midst of the guerrilla warfare, they gave it a name and an understanding. Catch it. So God has given me the understanding that a lot of us are blindsided by the enemy and I'm going to have something down below a resource about prayers concerning blindsided attacks from the enemy. And we don't know that we're in guerrilla warfare until it happens. It's like 
sudden attacks of the enemy like out of nowhere just like and then it will hit hard that's typically how guerrilla warfare will be like hit hit and run it's hostile then regular force like it's boom 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 and then you know run it's a ambushment from the enemy he's using inside forces to do most of his bidding false brethren undercover witches false prophets false apostles false teachers sometimes it can be like i said your work your job it doesn't necessarily have to be these false people um it could be your family members your friends it could be situations that god told you to get out of and you know you're still in whatever the case may be it's being used to hit you from all sides this is why this message is more important than ever. Let's be sober-minded. Let's be as gentle as a dove, but as wise as a serpent, and really tackle this thing head on, okay? We want to have on the armor at all times, but become cautious of what you take in spiritually in this season, because deception is thick. Oh, <laughs> if you have been on TikTok for more than a day and a half, uh, maybe YouTube, maybe the news, deception is thick. It's thick, and... Yeah, man, you 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 gotta really stay close to the to to the Lord. So Second Corinthians ten three through five E R V, which is the easy read version. We live in this world, but we we don't fight <laughs> our battles in the same way that the world does. The weapons we use are not human ones. Our weapons have power from God and can destroy the enemy's strong places. We destroy people's arguments and tear down every proud idea that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We also capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. Okay, so we're going to do a recap of three pivotal questions that I asked in episode um, one. So... Or episode two. Sorry, losing track. I knew this was gonna happen. I was just telling my friend the other day, like I, I'm in, I'm in three episodes in, but I'm already losing track. It doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> so it's what we battle against. What do we wear to our battles? How do we win? Um, if it wasn't clear in the first episode of the original video, um, of this part, that's what I should say the first part of this part. Um, then. I'll make it clear to you now, but I do advise you to go listen to it. There's a lot of great gems in there. Um, I spent a lot of time on it, and I just pray that it blesses you. If not, God bless you still. You know, you could stay and watch this one. Um, and don't do it now, by the way. Finish this video and then go watch that video. <laughs> but it, I save it to a watch later, by the way. Um, okay, so uh, question one is, what do we battle against? Ephesians 6, 12 tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, um, bracket, or be human beings with persons with bodies, bracket closed, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, bracket, spirit beings or persons without bodies, close bracket. So... Before I continue, I want to make something abundantly clear. You are promised to receive spiritual retaliation from demons, devils, unclean spirits, whatever you want to call them, when you are already in the will of God. You don't have to go looking for these battles. They definitely will come to you, unfortunately. Um, but John 16, 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. This is Jesus speaking. We shouldn't have any fear when it comes to warfare against demons. While I am aware fear will be their main tactic to try to trick you into defeat. They try to trick you into defeat. You're not defeated because Jesus has already won the victory. So it's a trick. It's a mentality. They're going to attack your mind. And definitely you're going to talk about the mind today because that's a big, big tactic. Uh, we shouldn't fear because God didn't give us that spirit, Second Timothy 1, seven. However, I don't want us to get overzealous without being properly trained to fight. I want to remind you of a verse, which is Jude 1, 9 through 11. Now, before we enter this, and I'm going to explain this after talking about Jude 1. Um, through experience, um, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. I lacked knowledge at the time. When we see things like principalities, powers, darknesses, this is, like I claimed, this was a defensive course. This is a defense. The armor is for you to be defended against these attacks. 
it's not for you to willy nilly go and start tearing and calling things down. Now, being led by the Spirit of God, if God has called you to that assignment, whatever the case may be, follow those convictions. Know the Bible well. Understand the word, the 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 word of God, and know the voice of God. That's important. However, I've seen videos of people entering places such as voodoo shops uh, and crystal shops and stuff and have made bold claims to cast down and clear out unclean spirits. Guys, I'm going to let Jude say it. (laughs) I'm going to let Jude say it. The archangel Michael, who went to mat with the devil, as they fought over the body of Moses, wouldn't dare level him with a blasphemous curse, but said simply, no, you don't. God will take care of you. But these people sneer at anything that they can't understand. And by doing whatever they feel like, living by animal instinct only, they participate in their own destruction. In summary, stay in your place. Don't overstep boundaries and authority in the realms of the spirit. This, this is the same Archangel Michael who had to come help fight um the prince of persia um another principality or high-ranking demon he came to fight the prince of persia um and he subjected himself not to become overzealous in rank and power one of the high-ranking angels okay but he submitted himself to the lord's rebuke and correction of satan so he submitted himself to saying god got this the lord rebuke you this is satan okay Notice how this verse says, these are people who claim things and they snare at what they don't understand. Trust me, as someone who is ignorant to this, knowledge, obedience is better than sacrifice. Our realms of authority as Christians all start the same, even if we're not called to the same places. We all still have to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils out of other people, and follow all the commands of Jesus. So once again, You don't have to go looking for the fight. Trust me. If you're doing any one of these things, the fight will come to you. I also want to add, a curse causes cannot land. So if you are breaching into realms, calling down principalities, I promise you the curse will land. Stepping out of the realms of authority, the curse will land. Colossians 2.15 says, God disarmed the principalities and the powers that were arranged against us and made a bold public display, an example of them in triumphing over them in him. And in it, the cross, God did it. He already did the job. Just like I said in episode one, in terrible grammar, Jesus done it. (laughs) He finished it. We destroy the works of the principalities by bringing people to Christ. God has given you the task and the assignments that you are specially graced for. Don't stand out of those bounds and out of the grace of God. By doing things outside of the will of God. I talked about this in episode one. You see how these all connect. And I would love for you to watch every single one of them. Because, you know, it, it, it may, it's going to make sense in this episode. But it might not. It might not. You might have to go back and watch the other two. So it can make a lot more sense and it all clicks. But at the end of the day, the main portion and purpose of this, I had to readdress this because I don't feel like I addressed this enough in um, episode two, which was the part one of this. Please stay in the realms of authority and understanding. Don't go into places and call down principalities unless God is specifically, unless you know for a fact. In fact, for most of the time, we know God won't do that. But, 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 just by some chance, if you are given that, test the spirit, pray fast, make sure you're hearing him. Because there's repercussions that come with these things, guys. So what do we wear to our battles? That's question number two. Ephesians 6, 13. We wear the armor of God. That's it. We wear the armor of God. And how do we win? Ephesians 6, 13, B. We stand. We actually stand. That's how we win. We outlast the devil, believe it or not. Um, We are called to stand in the midst of afflictions and adversities. Outlast those devils and don't give into temptation or sin. Give up or give in. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. That is a promise from God. So we actually win by just standing our ground. Standing our ground. Imagine boxing. I don't know much about boxing. Guys, please, please, please. Don't. I'm going to just use this analogy. (laughs) I'm going to use it from the knowledge of what I know. Hopefully the Holy Spirit can give me better insight. But this is what I know about boxing. It's whoever is not on the ground 
until the uh i think uh the ref calls to three you know in a particular round that's who wins so you know if you can beat beat out the devil <laughs> stand your ground um you 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 got this you got this but jesus already won the the victory and I, this is why I, I keep wanting to remind you guys i'm just going to talk about a few open doors uh for the enemy before we begin because um this armor is important but we want to talk about the open doors in our lives and i might do a bigger thing about this later on um but i'm going to discuss a little bit of it now because i believe that we need to rid of ourselves of these things before we start praying on armor and doing all that stuff we need to rid ourselves of these things these are very very big um points to me um mm -hmm. when it concerns this number one unforgiveness causes a whole plethora of issues one of main being unheard or an unanswered prayers and i have scripture for this uh mark 11 25 to 26 whenever you're stand, whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive you of your transgressions. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father who is in heaven forgive your, your transgressions. This is a promise. Forgive immediately, instantly. Don't wait. Forgiveness is not a process. Forgive. Trust me. Forgive. Um, number two, send back to prayer. Send back to sender prayers. <laughs> I had to address this a couple times this week in conversation. Um Completely unbiblical in the tense of the new covenant in the New Testament. I have a verse for that. Matthew 5, 43. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. Now, I'm not saying if something came from hell, don't say, so, oh, in the name of Jesus, go back to Sheol, go back to the pit. I'm not saying that. Don't You know, you say that in the in the bounds of the word of God and what the spirit leads you to say. However, I saw this again and I saw, see all this stuff on TikTok that I, or, or social media in general, but you know, I just spilled my source of <laughs> information for this um, issue. You have to pray for your enemies. That is the command of Jesus. So, yes, that's an open door. Uh, then let's get to the last open door. Living in unrepentant sin, whether you are struggling or not, unfortunately, the enemy does not care or play fair. So, and that's, this is a fact. He doesn't care, nor does he play fair. That's why God told um, Cain, um, don't you know if that you do good, um, you'll be able to overcome sin. He says, but since you have you have this anger you have the sin it's it's knocking at the door it's crouching it's seeking to devour you that's important um so whether you like it or not he's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour see how that those those two things connect so like i said it it, it really doesn't matter guys my people perish for a lack of knowledge coming into an understanding of these things Seek help. Submit yourself to God. If you're struggling, find accountability. Find prayer prayer warriors who can help you out. Find people who can hold you accountable, who can pray for you, who can counsel you. Seek the help. Go to God in truth, and he'll call. It, it, the Bible literally says, God is near those who call upon him in truth. Go to him in truth. God, I, I'm struggling. I actually like doing this stuff. I don't know. I can't get out of it. I don't know why. Just help me, and he'll help you. Trust me. So either way, if you are living in unrepentant sin, whatever it is, it's like consistent things that you know the Holy Spirit tells you um, and convicts you of it. And, you, and you're doing it consistently in front of God after God tells you, like, hey, it's an open door for the enemy. Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil. So that's just a, a few reminders of or a, a few understanding of what open doors for the enemy and i just have a couple reminders and then we're into the armor i promise i know <laughs> this has been reminders galore i told you the intro was open um to a lot of reminders and recaps because i just want to make sure some things were clear i don't feel like they were clear as in the last episode so i'm just gonna clarify them now and here um so let's talk about 
this is the last reminder oh spiritual warfare is no joke obviously and neither is the armor um bringing these things before the lord bringing these issues these sins of unforgiveness and hatred and unrepentant sin all before the lord well he's faithful and just to forgive you he's going to cleanse you of it jesus died for that that's the, so so guys that's, that's the whole point he died for your sins just come come before him and be like god i am struggling with this help me heal me teach me guide me he will do it also before i continue almost all of these scriptures i'm including in the study can be written and used in regarding prayer and you can develop individual prayer points as well so um you can go back and uh, write the scriptures down i can include the document below um and you can go find the scriptures as well all right let's begin the moment we've all been waiting for so to be clear i'm going to be talking from the talking or citing scripture from the amplified version for each and every single one of these pieces of armor in these verses so from I believe it's from 14 to 18 verses 14 to 18. They're all going to be in the amplified version. I believe if not, I'm sorry if I just, no, they are, they are. Um, some of the other verses I'm going to be quoting in the midst of this discussion or this teaching, uh, they're not, they might not be in the amplified. They might be in ESV. They might be in KJV. Do you, when you search it up, you'll find it. Some of them might be in NLT, but the main, the main portion of, these verses are going to be amplified concerning the armor. Okay, so stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, and moral courage around your waist. So the belt of truth is a very critical defense against the enemy's attacks. I originally didn't focus on this. Um, heavily when I was doing the study, but I have a visual, a visual representation of it now of what it should look like, which I'll share here on the screen. Um, and it's described to be the singulum. I believe I'm saying that right. Um, and it's defined as a wide belt from which Gladius hanged, um, on the side of an owner. So this was like used in the Roman times. When you look at this image, we could see that a small dagger or a smaller sword, which is called the butchering these names. Oh, goodness. I should have listened to it before I started this recording. Poggio, <laughs> which is typically used for closed hand combat. And it's um, or close hand combat. Sorry, close hand combat. And it's attached to the belt. So the importance of the belt is centered around truth. But I wanted to mention what the belt typically holds so you can get an understanding of where we get the truth from it's claimed to be one of the roman soldiers favorite weapon i have it here on the screen it's the the pudgio like i explained earlier i don't know if i said that right uh which i would assume because of its ease and its use of comfortability in comparison to the sling sword carried around their chest that's why it was their favorite but they don't really have they didn't give information for that um why is the belt of truth so important? How does it play into our lives? Well, 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 well. We'll start at home first. The Amplified Version includes that it is a belt of personal integrity and moral courage. We are called to walk in complete and utter truth as Christians. John 8, 4. John 8 verses 44 says, You are of your father the devil. Your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he's a liar and the father of lies. So we know that our father is God in heaven. Our father is not the enemy. Our father is not the devil. But Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees here um, and he gives a outstanding revelation that the devil is a father of lies. So everybody who comes into agreement with the lie and speaks lies, Jesus describes the devil as their father, um, which is which is interesting here. It's clear that the enemy twists and perverts the truth any way he can. The main truth that we stand upon is the word of God, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In a world full of lies, the only truth 
is God's words and the revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As believers, it's our duty to not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, speaking the truth and only the truth, learning God's word, which is true. I know um, we all have had friends, coworkers, maybe family members engaging in politics, ideologies, doctrines of this world. That's one of the ways. It can also be conforming through government, school, culture, or even religion, which um, particular denominations are built upon lies. Um, and if that doesn't work, then he'll try to get you to believe lies that you're not saved or you haven't come into um, agreement of the gospel of Jesus Christ or you're not a new creation in Christ. Um, he will lie to you. You're just your past self, right? These are all lies, saints. And white lies and half-truths are still lies. There's a reasons why the pudgio or the dagger is attached to your belt of truth. That is the sword of the spirit. And you can draw it out any time enemy comes to you with lies. Proverbs 2, 7 says he's a shield to those who walk in integrity, walk in integrity and truth and honesty. God is protecting you as you walk in his truth, as you stand firm and hold to, true to his word and the gospel message of Jesus Christ. In an ever-changing world of information, feelings, and trends, we know the trend is something new every single day. <laughs> you can't even keep up now. God stays the same and doesn't change now and forever. Truth, honesty, personal integrity, staying true to God's word. That is your belt. OK, the enemy's tactics would be to lie to you, to get you to believe and walk in lies in his footsteps. Keep your dignity, gird up your loins and stay true to God's word. So that's the belt of truth. Now we're moving on to the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6 14b says in the amplified version, having put on the breastplate of righteousness an upright heart. I got this from GCUEDU website. I'm going to, like I said, include the document down below. It's going to include some of these websites where I get these excerpts from. It says in in the armor of a Roman soldier, the breastplate served as a protection for some of the most important parts of the body. Underneath the breastplate is the heart, the lungs, and other organs necessary for life. So during this time, clearly, you didn't want to die on the battlefield. And even now, still, we, we have a particular armor. Um, it's kind of different. It's bulletproof because our weapons are different. But it's protecting the main organs of the body that are necessary to life necessary for you to live so you're going to see where I, i'm going with this um it's it's really cool and i love how the holy spirit broke this down in the study it's beautiful ezekiel thirty six twenty six says i will give you a new heart and a new spirit i'll put within you i will remove the heart of stone for a heart of flesh and give you um and I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. God's promise to the children of Israel with Jesus, Jesus being the last final sacrifice and atonement for all humanity's sins. Because we have been engrafted in as, Gentile, as Gentiles, we also receive a regenerated heart and the promised Holy Spirit. So what is the armor for exactly? Well, like I stated earlier, it's to guard your regenerated hearts. It was to guard the main organs uh, necessary for life in the body. And the same way that your spiritual armor, your breastplate of righteousness, is to guard your regenerated heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Everything. Think about that. Everything you do flows from the heart. Um, can our hearts be infected? By our own desires, our deeds, or struggles of the world and tempted attacks of the enemy? Of course it can be. But it's wise to have a frequent heart check with the Lord. Can you ask the Lord for a heart check? According to Jeremiah ten seventeen, yes, you can. Jeremiah ten seventeen says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. To every man, according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Similar to how Proverbs was just saying, everything that you do comes from your heart. So God's saying, I'm testing it by the way you act, by the way, what you do. I, I see it. I search the heart. I know what's deep down inside there. And for Psalms 139, 25, 24 to 25 shows us that his specialty, as David cries out, is to search the heart. That's his God's specialty. 
Uh, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me into the way of everlasting. Jesus gives us a deeper understanding that whatever your heart is filled with, your mouth will reveal. Matthew 12, 35, 34 to 35 says, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Harboring resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, etc. in our hearts is not only unhealthy, but it's against the commands of Jesus. It's a wide open door for the enemy and against your life as a believer. It's a wide open door for the devil in your life as a believer. Guarding your heart is crucial in your daily walk with Christ. Being quick to forgive, slow to anger, slow to speak, being mindful of our words and our actions, honoring the Lord our God with our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Okay, holding true to the righteousness in Christ Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Solomon states in Proverbs 4.23 that everything you do flows from the heart. We just read that. Think about that for a second. Everything you do, everything you do. And that's why God says he will give us the desires of our hearts in Psalms 37 verse 4. Because our desires tend to be bad, our intentions are never pure, but once he gives us a new heart, we have new desires and better intentions. Our breastplate of righteousness is needed to be worn daily. Romans 1.17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, and as it was written, But the righteous man shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made him who knew no sin to be sin. On our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are deemed righteous only through Jesus in him. And always bring your heart before the Lord in repentance and meekness and humbly coming before him to search your heart to see if there's anything holding you back from moving forward in grace, purity, love. It's so, so important that the breastplate is really protecting our hearts. We are supposed to allow him to purify us in the first place, making sure our intentions and our desires are aligned with his. This is how you guard your heart effectively by living right and defeating the enemy. All right. Amen. Amen. So we see that um, the breastplate of righteousness is God's way of doing things. It's walking in love. It's walking in truth. It's walking in his word and really guarding our heart, knowing his word so well that we're going to allow his wills, his desires, his intentions to govern the way that we walk, govern the way that we live. And th through that, every intention of the heart will be through Jesus, through God and his will. Okay? Amen. So we have a couple more verses, guys. We're, 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 we're almost out of here. I know it's been, um, it's been a little bit longer than our normal episodes, but I really, really, really spent a lot of time on this. Um, just really wanting to see what the spirit of the Lord had to say concerning this. Um, and like I said, we, we, we have to understand that this armor is just not a pray it on and forget it type thing. It's a live our lives type thing. It's a walk out the word of God, understanding the word of God, living through the word of God, trusting in Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Like this is, this is a daily walk type thing. And our armor, as some people would like to say, you know, you pray it on, you imagine yourself with it on, which is all great things, but it's also making sure that we live in accordance to God's word um, and submitting ourselves to him. Okay, so Ephesians 6, 15, and as our shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. So the shoes keep yourself always in peace, always ready to show and reveal the gospel through your actions and your reactions to things. Romans 10, 14 to 15 says, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they were sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. We are given a charge, a duty, a responsibility when it comes to carrying the gospel of peace. This version of the text explains that we are to have readiness. Some versions say preparation. Essentially, there is a call to be ready to go for the gospel. Truth 
lies in this portion of the text. It says, how then are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom that they have never heard? And how are they to hear in whom when someone is not preaching? And how are they to preach when someone is not sent? We carry the peace with us and a, an assurance of our salvation and the feet that were called beautiful was the ones who preached the good news. Hold true to this one fact, saints, that we aren't in a traditional war. This is a war of evangelism. Both kingdoms are hold recruiters, right, that they send out to recruit others for this kingdom. We are evangelizing people into the kingdom of God. That's why I made the notion that send back to sender prayers are demonic and they're not of God. You know, I'm not willing to divide the body based on this, but I'm willing to understand and um, sit down with those who don't understand um, and have us both humbly come before the Lord for the understanding of this. Um, we are called to pray and preach and prophesy people into the kingdom of God, not condemn their souls to hell or cause turmoil in their lives. God is the judge. So we just execute his judgment here on earth um, through the way that he says to do his command, to do his will. We, we walk through that. How would we then be no different from the kingdom of darkness? We are ministers of reconciliation. Second Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. All this from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and give us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and trusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We fight spiritual wars to reach the lost in the dying war world. Our main goal, as I mentioned in episode two, is to make disciples for Jesus Christ and be ready at any moment to do so. So we walk in peace. We walk in love. We walk in understanding of the gospel. We are assured. That's our peace. We are sure that Jesus has died for our sins and he's our only ticket into heaven, our only ticket into eternal salvation. But... We're walking in that and we're showing others our new kicks. We're showing others the shoes that we carry, the beautiful feet of the gospel. We're walking in it and through our walk with Christ, that's how others are getting saved, walking and trusting in God. Okay, so we are in Ephesians 6, 16, verse 16. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. I think this one is pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> but I'm not going to, you know, just skim over it just like that. I have a couple of verses. Psalms 91 verse 5. Uh, you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. Um, the shield of faith is really just a protection against the enemy's tactics, his arrows. Um, the Bible sh shows us that he sends arrows, um, arrows that fly by day, attacks and, you know, ooh, revelation time. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes things will come to my mind and into my spirit, and I'll come to an understanding of it. And, yeah, so sorry. Anyways, the Lord just revealed to me that the arrows that come by day, like, when we're in the day, what are we doing? We're working. We're going to school. We're experiencing life. And those are when the enemy wants to get us the most because not all of us have time to sit out and plan and, and read his word. Not all of us have time to sit out and plan and, and worship or whatever or pray. So throughout the day when we're busy doing work and living life and doing other things, that's when the enemy wants to send its arrows. That's why the arrows come by day. But the shield of faith to know that God's word is true. God is going to defend me. God is going to protect me. Holding up that faith against those flaming darts and those arrows, that's why it's important to carry your shield with you anywhere you go. Because in the midst of being blindsided, like I said, guerrilla warfare, being attacked by the enemy blindsided, the shield is your protection, having faith in God protecting you. So it cannot get to you. The weapons may, may form, but they won't prosper. Amen? All right, so... Now, this is my favorite one. This is the one that I received revelation on early on. I, I kid you not, before I even did any of the other pieces of armor um, and sat down and kind of studied this, the Holy Spirit revealed to me 
the helmet of salvation. I love this one. I love this one because this one, a lot of Christians, uh, baby Christians, early in the faith Christians, um, this is a crucial armor for them to have. This is a crucial armor for all of us to have. But it it, it is really, 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 we're, we need to be dependent on the salvation that we have only through Jesus Christ. Um, recently, came across some individuals, some influencers, YouTubers, not going to say any names, um, TikTokers, people who are, you know, fresh in the faith, who preach the gospel. It's more than one person, so you can't really, <laughs> you know, pinpoint them down. But it's more than one person who does it. Um, and they kind of go in and, and they, they preach and they're good, but they will tend to say things that are, leaning into an understanding of a workspace salvation or, 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 or whatever. And, and, and now these other people who are younger Christians who are following them, who are in love with the Lord and they're on fire and they love God. And they, they believe that their only, their salvation was only through Jesus Christ, through by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone now are thinking that works plus my grace and my is what causes me to be saved. And that is wrong. I think it's called the helmet of salvation. I think I know it's called the helmet of salvation because it protects your salvation in your mind in understanding who you are in Christ, what Christ has done for you. It protects your renewed mind against the enemy. So, Without the helmet of salvation, you are at risk to become bewitched like the church of Galatia. What happened in the church of Galatia? Paul said, who bewitched you? In that letter, Paul was basically saying that these people have added on works, added on to Christ, crucified him. Like he, they, 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 you're, you're putting on like, like, like his sacrifice was not enough. And like you can work your way into heaven. No, 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 no. And that's why he said the helmet of salvation. That's why, because the helmet is to protect our renewed mind. We have a renewed mind in Christ that, yes, I have a, like I said, gospel of peace. I have a peace. I have a safety. I have a security. I have an assurance that Jesus has done the work on the cross. I don't have to work in anything. I'm so grateful. I'm eternally grateful. And through that, works are, are, are brought through the renewing of your spirit, the regenerating of your heart, the renewing of your mind works works come out of of the holy spirit living in you right it, it, it brings us to good works it's we are his workmanship so the helmet of salvation is used to protect your renewed mind to keep you from bewitchment attacks of the enemy and from everybody surrounding you from the people on social media who you know are preaching the gospel whether they'll be saved for how many years or whether they were saved for a, a year and a half it's to protect against that it's to be firm footed and guys it's so important to have on this helmet of salvation know who you are in christ be secure in who you are in christ before you start taking advice from other people or going on social media and preaching the gospel or whatever the case may be know the gospel first know what jesus has done for you it's a sacrifice you can never never atone for it's something that you can never do yourself it's jesus god in the flesh who had to come and do it so that's what the helmet of salvation for i i i was so blessed that the holy spirit gave me that in the shower through well most things most revelations sorry tmi come through the shower <laughs> just showering and out of nowhere boom um it was i was actually listening to uh galatians and god revealed that after I heard Paul said, like, who be with you? Like, wait, wait, wait. Helmet of salvation. That's why he said helmet of salvation, because it's protecting your salvation in your mind. It's protecting your renewed mind to know that Christ did it. You don't need to add on works to what Christ did. That is not how you become saved. Narrow is the gate. Wide is the way that leads to dis destruction. Why is that? Because wide is the whole world. The whole world thinks that you can work your way into salvation and paradise and love and whatever, all this stuff. And I'm going to get into that in, a, in the episode. I'm so, 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 I'm so ready. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that the Lord has given that topic to me. Um, and I'm just going to study and stay and sit in his presence to understand that a little bit more. But there's going to be a great episode on this hustle culture and, and in the world and different religions and why God and Jesus is the only way why he said narrow because jesus had to do it 
everybody else preaches works, but that's a whole nother topic. So let's talk about the final one, which I believe is a sort of the spirit. And then I'm also going to talk about, um, I have to, I have my Bible here. I'm going to open it up to talk about, um, praying consistently because, because Paul talks about that as well. I'm going to touch on that. I didn't write it down here, but yes. All right. Ephesians 6 verse 17. And we're almost out of here, guys. All right. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There's dependence you must have on the word of God for the word of God is living and active is sharper than any two edged sword, piercing the division of the soul and of spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. We need to be in our it is written era. <laughs> we need to enter the era of it is written. Why? No more arguing or opinions or doctrines or thoughts of the enemy. We need to start doing what Jesus said and Jesus did. It is written. You cannot wield this word of God, which is the spirit, the sword, um, if you do not know the word of God. So remember when I said a curse causes cannot land, the enemy is attacking you um, and the weapon cannot form or prosper when you know the word it can't it just simply cannot it it it, it can't either either way but it, it but it won't definitely after you know the word um if you're living a life um keeping with the fruits of repentance as well i think that's 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 something that the lord has been speaking to me recently as well just um living a life keeping with the fruits of repentance but knowing the word that's our sword guys that's that's what jesus really used to defeat the enemy in the uh desert in the wilderness in the 40 days of fasting he knew the word it is written because the devil tried to you know guess what the devil knew the word too we see a lot of these these preachers these ministers out here they're using the word and they are completely false and being led by other spirits and we do have to pray for them we don't want to just condemn their souls to hell we want to pray for them that they come to repentance please guys join me with that in prayer don't just condemn their souls to hell that's not what we're called to do but what we really want to do is know our word, too, because they're deceptive. They're, they're being used by wicked spirits, and they're allowing themselves to be used by wicked spirits to gain whatever they want to gain. And they're going to trick you into thinking that one thing is one way when it's not. Know your word. That's your sword. That's it's, Remember, it's connected to your belt. <laughs> um, we want to know this. We want to know this. We have to know this. We got to know this. And I'm actually going to pull up my Bible right here because I didn't add this verse on here. But... I want to just add this last thing to here where Paul says in, I believe it's in the same verse or maybe it's in 18. It says praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to the end. Keep alert with all pres preservance, uh, making supplication for all the saints. So, yes, guys, constant prayer, constant communication. That's all it is. Constant conversation with the father, constant attentiveness to his voice knowing him is what we need to do and that's above all else above the armor above the spiritual warfare above in knowing the prayer points and the tactics and all these things we got to know jesus you got to know jesus there's going to be people who are coming to us with a different jesus a different gospel and paul says let them be a curse if they come to you with that so God bless you guys. This was such a blessing. I loved, loved, loved this study above all else. It was intense. It took almost like I think a month and a half. I'm not even joking of when I started it and when God told me to do it up till now, finishing it and recording it right now. I even have to check to see if the camera's still rolling because I don't know if it is. But I'm blessed to know that... Um, God cares. God loves us. He's here for us. He wants us to be well equipped in this hour. And I'm blessed to be uh, partnering with the Holy Spirit to doing something like this. You know, I, 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 I don't have any degree or anything like that. <laughs> um, but I, I know that the Spirit of the Lord speaks to me and I know the word of God to the understanding of what God has revealed to me through his wisdom, through his knowledge, through his understanding. And Father God, I just pray right now that the 
eyes of our hearts will be enlightened, Lord. I pray that you will just continuously give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this hour. I pray that you will just fortify our minds, Lord. Your word says that you are a stronghold. I pray that you just be a stronghold to us right now, Father, and just build up your word, your understanding, your belief, your love, your will, your power into us, Lord. Fill us up with your spirit, God. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers only. Not Let us not deceive ourselves like your word says, Father. I thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to your people, to bless your people. And I thank you for blessing me with your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, your, your correction. It's a blessing to just know Jesus. So I thank you, Lord, for this platform. I thank you for this podcast. I thank you for all the viewers. I pray that you bless them. I pray for the ones who don't know you yet, who need to know you. I pray that they come to know you. The word says that no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draws them. So draw them, Jesus. Draw them, Father. Draw them to Jesus. Bring them to their only acceptance, the only uh, perpetuation, the only atonement for their sins, which is Jesus Christ Almighty, our Lord and Savior, the beautiful King. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe, share with your friends. Please, 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 please get this content out there because there is a lot of people preaching a lot of crazy other stuff. That's not Bible. Um, And we do need to push out more truth more bible um not because it's me i don't care i push out anybody who's preaching bible so i want you to do the same and just stay in the word of god stay close to his presence spend time with him today after you watch this go spend time with the god with the father and and i thank you i'm sorry i'm flustered because somebody's at the door but god bless you have a blessed day love you all amen